Okay, so let's look at uh, cervical cancer. Okay, so we can move on to the topic called cervical cancer and we can define cervical cancer as this is just growth of abnormal cells on the cervix. So growth of abnorm abnormal cells on the cervix. And this can be characterized by uh, bleeding, uh, backache, and also lower abdominal pain. So when it comes to cervical cancer, just like any other cancer, cancers are caused by abnormal proliferation or growth of cells, but these cells are growing abnormally on the cervix. And I'm saying this can be characterized by uh, abnormal vaginal discharge, which have unpleasant smell apart from that bleeding, and also backache and also lower abdominal pain. So that is uh, how you can uh, simply define um, a cervical cancer. So what is a cervix? So a cervix is just an opening to the womb or the uterus in itself. So if you look at um, my diagram here, so if you look at this diagram here to my, to your right, you will see that this is uh, the opening, you have uh, the cervix here, and then you have the uterus inside. So this is what we call the cervix. And when this uh, is cancerous, you call this person as having cervical cancer. So this is just, in other words, this is what you call the birth canal or where the menstrual flows pass through uh, on its way to the uh, vagina. So that is the cervix. Okay, so we can move on to the causes of uh, cervical cancer. So when it comes to cervical cancer, the main cause of cervical cancer is human papilloma virus infection, which is the HPV virus. And this one is commonly transmitted, uh, transmitted through uh, sexual intercourse. And uh, uh, when it comes to cervical cancer, HPV uh, can cause changes. If, it, if not treated, it can cause severe changes on the cervix. So just as you can see on the diagram that I have, it can result in a abnormal discharge on the cervix. And if left untreated, it can even lead to the, the actual cancer of the cervix. So the human papilloma virus, it causes some changes on the cervix, just as you can see some discharges coming out. And if not treated, it can even lead to cervical cancer. Apart from that, HPV cannot be detected or noticed by the victim. So it is not possible for the victim to see the human papilloma virus with, uh, with just eyes, you need uh, to use uh, instruments or uh, laboratory instruments for you to be able to see the virus. Then uh, apart from that, uh, you may see uh, cancer of the cervix may mainly spread slowly and uh, it leaves no symptoms or mostly pain, but you just see pain maybe affecting other structures like the back, the, the the abdomen and other regions. Uh, and may, mainly an indication of pain in the cervix is a sign that the disease has spread. So once the disease is spread to other regions, it, it may indicate that the disease has now spread to other regions. It may have reached maybe stage three or stage four. So what are some of the risk factors of human papilloma virus infection, which is the thing that causes see, cervical cancer? So here, some uh, risk factors can include uh, uh, young age. So mainly when it comes to young age who are sexually active, there is increased risk in adolescents due to lack of protective cervical mucus. So because the, the people who are still adolescents, they don't have the protective cervical mucus present in them in good uh, amount. It is just the lead or not there, meaning the chances of them getting the HPV virus is very high. Apart from that, it is also increased in cervical uh, ectopy. So in cervical ectopy, the chances are 
are very high. Also, uh, it is increased in the susceptibility to local trauma. So where you experience some local trauma or friction uh, to the cervix, this may increase the chances of contracting to contracting the HPV virus. Okay. So when it comes to cervical ectopy, so when it comes to cervical ectopy, this is just um, so this is this is just in cervical ectopy. This is when some uh, glandular cells that line the inside of the cervix can now spread to the outer surface of the cervix, and then uh, the outside of your cervix normally has hard cells, which are supposed to hard cells, which we call epithelial cells. Then inside you have the the granular cells so once these cells sprays to the outer part because these are different epithelial cells are hard cells they can uh, withstand friction and other things without getting uh, involved or damaged but the granular cells are too soft with just minimal frac uh, friction they can get injured and then that's how HPV virus can easily um, be trans uh, transported or uh, uh, be transmitted to, to uh, a person of young age. Then apart from that, having higher numbers of sexual partners can increase the chances of contracting HPV virus. This is because you never know who you are going out with and uh, you also don't know who that person is also going out with. So having multiple sexual partners can increase the chances. Apart from that high number of partners with multiple sexual partners, which I've talked about, and also presence of other STIs, which includes HIV. HIV in itself suppresses the immune system. So if you have an STI such as HIV, meaning you can easily contract uh, you can easily contract uh, the human papilloma virus because your immune system is already low meaning uh, the chances of the body even being able to fight minimal numbers of viruses is uh, drastically reduced uh, in immunosuppressed in individuals including hiv and also smoking so smoking can also result in causing high risk of someone developing or contracting the HPV virus. Okay, so uh, we can move on to cervical cancer and HIV infection. So mainly women with uh, HIV are more likely to have higher prevalence of uh, HPV. So women or uh, basically women or individuals who are already have HIV, they are susceptible, highly susceptible to developing or to contracting human papilloma virus because the immune system is already reduced. And the other thing is like uh, uh, you, uh, patients may even have uh, cervical lesions. Apart from that, this can even be more higher if it's a, in young age, whereby it is an adolescent who is HIV positive and they also have uh, Mm, uh, HIV, meaning the chances of them contracting uh, uh, HPV, human papilloma virus, which causes cervical cancer, is even more higher. So what are some of the clinical manifestations or signs and symptoms of um, cervical cancer? The first thing is that HPV is asymptomatic if it is in the early stages, meaning it's hard for you to see symptoms or clinical manifestations if it's in the early stages. But some of the symptoms or clinical manifestations that you can notice is bleeding. So this woman may experience abnormal uh, bleeding from the cervix. Apart from that, there's also change in menstrual cycle. There's change in the menstrual cycle where a patient even experiences postmenopausal uh, changes uh, or having uh, pauses in terms of uh, menses in between uh, the menses. They start, they stop, they start just like that. Apart from that, there's also postcoital bleeding. So this is also common clinical manifestation of cervical cancer. 
there is also uh, a, an unpleasant di discharge uh, from the cervix and this is mainly foul smelling. Apart from that, there is pain which can be experienced, back ache and also lower abdominal pain and also hip uh, pain on the hips. So these are some of the clinical manifestations that can be seen. So this is uh, a cervix which is inflamed due to presence of uh, HPV virus. So if you, you go for screening, they'll visualize and find that the, the cervix is, uh, is highly, highly inflamed due to presence of, of the virus, okay? So if you look at this other diagram, this is how a normal cervix should look like. But after getting infected with HPV, it becomes inflamed and it oozes uh, a discharge. And this continues growing. If untreated, this will severely grow and end up affecting the entire cervix. And at this point, it might have even uh, spread to other parts. So we can move on to staging of cervical cancer. So in terms of staging of cervical cancer, you see you can start from stage one. So in stage one, the, the carcinoma is confined to the cervix, meaning at this point, it is just within the cervix, not even spread to other parts. Then in stage one, A, there is microinvasive carcinoma, and this is strictly confined to the cervix. It is not clinically visible. So here it could be just embedded inside the, the tissue, but it has started spreading a bit just from the inside and is still confined to the cervix, but clinically it is not yet visible. It cannot be detected. Then uh, we can move on to stage two. So on or still on stage one. So on stage one B, uh, the the carcinoma at this point is now clinically visible, but strictly confined to the cervix. So on stage one B, you may they, they may clinically you may be able to detect that this is um, cancer of the cervix, but at this point it is still confined to the cervix. Then on stage two A. On stage 2A, at this point, uh, the, the carcinoma spreads beyond the cervix, which includes the upper two thirds of uh, the vagina, but not tissues around the uterus. So here it may even spread to the closest uh, organ or structure, but it does not affect the tissue around the uh, uterus. But in stage 2B, the, uh, the carcinoma at this point spreads beyond the cervix, also affecting tissues of the uterus, but not reaching the pelvic wall. So it spreads beyond the cervix, of in, in invading even the uterus, but not reaching the pelvic wall. Then in stage 3, uh, cancer of uh, the cervix, there is invasion of the lower third of the vagina. And uh, in stage 3B, it even extends to the pelvic wall uh, or even hydronephrosis occurs. So uh, in stage 3, meaning it is extended to the entire, entire region. At this point, uh, even treatment becomes a bit, a, a bit hard. And then in terms of, uh, so we can move on to stage, stage four. Okay, so in stage four, here it has a stage four A, it is supposed to involve the mucosa of the bladder and the rectum. So in stage four, you'll find that the cancer cells, they even spread, even reaching as far as the bladder or the rectum, meaning the entire, pelvic region or lower abdomen is affected. In stage 4B, the cancer even spread to, spreads to distant organ. At this point, this is the end stage of cancer, meaning treatment becomes severely hard because at this point it has spread to other, other organs. So how can we prevent um, 
prevent cervical cancer. We can prevent cervical cancer through screening. So screening uh, helps because this involves early detection and early treatment of the disease. And uh, in terms of screening, uh, so screening they may use uh, a pap smear and pap smear mainly is done to women between 20 and 45 years and this can be done every three years but sometimes it should be even be yearly from the time uh, this person becomes sexually active. Also screening, the other thing that is involved in screening is pelvic examination. So a pelvic examination can be done to check how the pelvic is by the physician. Also visual ins inspection with the acetic acid and also HPV-based screening. So these things can be done. The other uh, thing that is done during screening is something called... Um, a skiller test. So in a skiller test, there's iodine uh, used to stain normal cells and uh, here abnormal cells will not take up the iodine because they do not contain glycogen. Uh, and then during histology, uh, it will be performed on these abnormal cells to visualize whether they are cancerous or not. Then in a corposcopy can also be done, and this is endoscopic view of the vagina and the cervix, and also biopsy can be done in cases of uh, where the pap smear has suggested that they are abnormal cells. HPV vaccination can be done, and this one works well for young girls. They seem to respond better like old-aged. Apart from that, condom use is another preventive measure of cervical cancer. It helps it to some extent. The other thing is um, also male circumcision, which reduces harboring of the HPV virus in the foreskin. Also practicing self-sex and fewer partners is, uh, is uh, advisable. Ideally, you are ju just supposed to have one partner and also avoiding early sex because as a young uh, adolescent your immune system is not yet fully developed so the body is not capable to even fight stronger infection reducing smoking it it is a carcinogen it is carcinogenic meaning it can easily cause uh, it can easily cause uh, 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 cancer HPV because it disturbs cell replication uh, because of the chemicals, the tar and nicotine which are found in cigarettes. So who is eligible for mainly cancer screening because screening is a major part of, um, of cervical cancer. So any woman who is sexually active is eligible for, for cancer screening. And apart from that, HIV zero status, meaning any woman, regardless of your HIV status, you are eligible for cancer screening. Apart from that, marital status, meaning in terms of marital status, regardless of your relationship status, whether married, single, cohabiting, or any type of relationship you are in, you are eligible for cancer screening. Then in terms of treatment, in terms of, um, uh, of uh, treatment, certain surgical procedures can be, can be performed. So a patient can be indicated for uh, radical hysterectomy or pelvic lymphadenopathy. So a patient can be indicated for radical uh, hysterectomy, meaning the, the uterus is going to be removed from this individual. And in radical hysterectomy, here there will be excision of the uterus uh, with the, 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 the parametrium. Uh, everything is going to be removed and also the upper one third of, uh, of the vagina is also going to be removed together with the uterus. So here uh, including the pelvic lymph nodes may also be removed together uh, in, the, in this radical uh, hysterectomy. Pelvic lymphadenectomy, so pel in pelvic lymphadenectomy, meaning the pelvic um, 
uh, lymph nodes are also going to be removed in this procedure. So the patient can be indicated for this surgical procedure, meaning you're going to prepare your patient electively for this surgical procedure if indicated. Okay. And apart from that, a simple hysterectomy can be done in stage 1A cancer of the cervix. Apart from that, the tra tracheolectomy, which is removal of the cervix, param parametria, and the upper vagina in stage 1A, uh, here the, no the, the lymph nodes are left because in this one, the lymph nodes may, may have not been invaded by the cancer cells. Other treatment modalities that can be done apart from the surgical procedures that I've mentioned is cryosurgery. So in cryosurgery here there's destruction of superficial abnormal cells with cord. Then an electrocutary here there is destruction of superficial abnormal cells with heat and then the last one that can be done is uh, laser vaporization where there is destruction of superficial abnormal cells with light energy. So when it comes to uh, this condition, mainly if the patient has cancer, they may be indicated for surgery. And what type of surgery are you going to prepare this patient for? You prepare this patient for an elective surgery. So you prepare your patient for an elective surgery. And as usual, elective surgery, uh, you need to you need to admit the, your patient. So you admit your patient at least a few days before surgery. Apart from that, you need to give psychological care. You need to give psychological care. You also need to explain the pre and post of expectation, signing of the consent form. So all those things, they need to be talked about. Nutrition, then from there, move on to the immediate pre-op. And during the immediate pre-op, you need to look at um, uh, the, the phys in physical preparation, gastric preparation. And uh, apart from gastric preparation, talk about um, so apart from gastric preparation you can talk about uh, uh, bowel preparation bladder preparation so all those headings they need to be talked about okay so in terms of elective surgery so you can elective surgery preparation you can refer to the notes uh, or to the tutorial that I sent earlier you can go to the YouTube channel by following the link that is down here on how you can manage uh, conditions uh, for surgery in terms of elective and the emergency because that is the standard that you need to follow for you to get the full 50 marks that you are supposed to get under management. But just not to say cancers, you prepare patient for elective surgery and not emergency surgery because cancers are not any emergence there's nothing much you can do to solve the problem there's just something that can be done or they don't have immediate life-threatening effects so this is where we'll end with today's uh, lesson thank you for taking time to go through ensure that you read the notes and go through and also uh, make clarifications see you next time thank you Thank you.